Hello and welcome to another virtual daily devotion as we are in week two of Parables of Jesus. And today I want to dive into a parable in the Gospel of Luke. Uh, it's often called the Parable of Bigger Barns. Basically, in a nutshell, uh, there's a farmer, has a bumper crop, and he says to himself, note the verse 18, I say to myself, self, I'm doing pretty well. What should I do with all this extra blessing I've been given? Well, he said to himself, I will build for myself bigger barns. And I'll keep all this surplus, all the chips, all the M&Ms. I'll pull them all over to my side and I'll keep it all for myself. That way, whenever I need it, I'll have it. And then in the story, God says, you fool, you idiot. Don't you know that this is the last day, this is your last night on earth. And all that narrow mind focus on self, where's that going to get you eternally? Well, I mean, I think about this in terms of our daily culture. Hey, you need to get into this new car because you look great behind this new ride. Your neighbor's got one. How about you? You've got to have your hair just so curly so that when it waves, I don't have massive curls, but when you do one of these hair tosses, hair toss, anyway, you have that nice, you know, people would catch your attention. You have to wear this cologne or drink this beverage for people to notice you across the room and women or men to hang on you. But everything, I want you to know this, everything's about you. You gotta look nice, you gotta smell nice, and you've earned it. So store up your stuff for a rainy day. And this is where it gets a little tricky because a lot of us in that hard kind of work ethic Say, well, I've deserved this, I'm storing up. And what happens when something bad does happen? You know, I mean, Jesus wants us to just go kind of carefree and give away everything we've got. And then what happens when the bottom falls out or a pandemic hits or we lose our jobs? Got to have something to fall back on, right? What about things for our kids? And yeah, yeah, I get it. It's real life. But notice the language in this parable. This, this fool is all about himself. And he sees the blessings he's been given in his life as being all about himself. I've seen a lot of people responding to these times of pandemic and saying, well, this hasn't hit me. This hasn't affected my family. I'm pretty much doing the same thing I've always done. And so I've taken the time to improve on my own life, do projects around the house. And many have taken it, and I'm not saying those things aren't bad, are bad, but taking all that time to look inward instead of thinking, how many business owners are out of work? How many restaurants are going under? How many of your neighbors have lost jobs? How many of them worried about how they're gonna pay their next bill or mortgage, not you know, what color the carpet's gonna be? And maybe, just maybe, in this moment and in the rest, in a culture that says it's all about me, myself, and I, and it's all about, you know, what, what diplomas hang on your wall, what you got parked in the garage, what your address and zip code is, where you live, what your neighborhood's like. And Jesus says, it's not all about that. Not by a long straw. And when it all goes back into the box, meaning at the end of our life, we stand before God and God says, what have you done with what I've given you? Well, whatever I darn well pleased. You know, I did it for myself. Well. Maybe Christ calls us into seeing the world differently. Maybe bigger barns holding stuff that just rots isn't the kind of wealth God wants us to build in the kingdom. I've known a lot of people who have had a lot of stuff but have been very poor. And I've known a few people who have very little in terms of coins to scratch together. But they spend some of the wealthiest people in the world. Last story. Two men, <clears throat> Arm and Hammer and a young man named Bob who worked at a local grocery store. Arm & Hammer, as you know, is a Fortune 500 company. He built an empire, but people on his board couldn't, people who worked with for years, who he had called on his board, couldn't stand him, loathed him. His former wife, who he did divorced, thought he was one of the most hard-hearted people. Even his children said, we had never had any kind of relationship with our dad. All he cared about was building this, like Scrooge McDuff, this vast fortune. Whereas Bob worked at the local grocery store, took time for every person coming through the aisle, would buy with his salary, or his, his pay, 
he'd buy flowers that were going a little bit, they'd give them a discount, and he'd give them to the ladies in the aisle. He'd write little notes and take time, little scripture passages and inspirational quotes. And he'd have, hand them to people, looking them in the eye and say, I hope you have a wonderful day. Bob found himself living out back in the alley behind the grocery store. When Bob died, the church was packed. People in line, out the door, to come see that man who we switched lines at the grocery store because of the way he made us feel. Because in the moment when you talked to him, you were the only person that mattered. Arm and Hammer, meanwhile, compared to a guy living out back in an alley, making just enough to eat, not enough to put a roof over his head, had more money than small nations. And in his memorial, one person, his lawyer, not his kids, not his co-workers, not his ex-wife, not a friend. You can be tremendously rich and chasing all the stuff of bigger barns, or you can be wealthy in a different way that values relationship and treasures them where moth and rust don't get to it. Where are you rich in your life?